Welcome back to The Well. I'm here today accompanied by a very special guest, Awilda Ticas. And our goal with this video is to encourage women who are experiencing a process of infertility to trust God as they wait for their children. And I, in my process, have heard a lot of testimonies, but of all the testimonies, hers has just really been planted in my heart. It just stayed with me throughout my hardest times before I had my son, even now after I have my son. So please stay tuned as she shares with us her experience in trusting God, waiting for her children. And she speaks to us about the miracle babies that God gave her many years ago. Awila, please give us a little background in your process as you were waiting for God to give you your children. And eventually we'll talk about how he spoke to you, but just give us a little bit of background into even how did you know that you were having problems conceiving and the different feelings, experiences that you went through. Hello and God bless. My name is Awila Tigas. Um, just to explain a little bit about what has happened or what happened, I didn't know I had a problem. I always thought that just as my sisters, they were fertile and they would have children that once I got married and would try, that I would just have successful pregnancies. Well, that wasn't the case. I got married in 2004 um, and I just couldn't conceive. Because I was older, I figured that we didn't have the time to wait. I was 33 when I married. And so I spoke to him about it. And he said it was perfect if we would just conceive maybe the year later. But we, we started trying right away and it just didn't happen. And I didn't know I had a problem. I just kept trying, thinking that I was getting it wrong as far as the cycles were concerned. Mm -hmm. But I didn't figure it out until I started to see a specialist as to what the deal was, what the problem was with my womb. And exactly what did they tell you? Well, when I went to the first doctor, that, that gynecologist, he turned around and he said to me, um, we're going to give you, it looks like you're not ovulating every month. So we're going to give you some Clomid. Okay. And so that's going to start you on your ovulation. You're also getting older. So once you hit 35, it's going to be more of an issue. Mm -hmm. So he gave me uh, Clomid and I started that. And I kept trying to have to get pregnant and it just, it didn't work. Okay. So about how many years would you say that you tried treatments? I started treatment maybe a year after I got married, 2005. Okay. And I stopped treatment in 2008. Oh, wow. That's, that's a pretty long time. Yes. And I gained a lot of weight in the process. Um, I hated my body. I hated what it was doing to me. I rejected my body and was very depressed. And so I gained over 70 pounds in the process of trying to get pregnant. And I joke about it all the time, mm -hmm. but it really took a toll on me. When I saw my sister, Elizabeth was able to conceive the time that I was really wanting to have a baby. It, I just didn't understand what, why I was going through this process if no one in my household had this issue before. And I just, tried and went to the doctors and I finally spoke to a specialist that dealt with an infertility and that's when the things began to to work a little bit better for me can you tell us more when you when you say it started to work better well the first doctor gave me clomid and he mixed that clomid with um um some diabetic I can't remember what it was, metformin. metformin. Yeah. He mixed it with metformin. Mm -hmm. And that metformin made me gain all that weight. So once I started, I started uh, doing some research and I went to a doctor called Dr. Cohen. And Dr. Cohen explained to me what the issue was with the infertility, why the ovaries had shut down. I was getting older. He said, I've always had that problem. I just didn't know about it until I decided to do the research. Yeah. which is very puzzling because in those days, your parents or your, your mom is not really looking to treat infertility. So had we started the process when I was younger in my teens, when I didn't get a re regular menstrual cycle, when I skipped months and months, mm -hmm. uh, I think the problem would have been easier to handle when once I hit, you know, once I got married and we couldn't conceive. So he tried other measures and as far as medication, 
So we went back on the Clomid with him and he mixed it with another medicine. I can't remember what that was. And I was ovulating, except that the ovulation, they were not viable. Those eggs were not good. We know that there are women who are watching this, who are experiencing infertility. And we want you to know that we too have been there. I myself still find myself in this position. So let's talk a little bit about how you felt during this time. Because I know one common theme is that women might say they felt alone, like no one understands. Just thoughts that ran through your head. I know for me, it was like, maybe I'll never have children. And I know I also did a lot of shopping. I did some traveling. And I remember I was even in Italy crying. Like who cries in Italy? Because I was like, I don't want a European vacation. I want children. Right. I was already 30 something years old. I'm presently 38 years old. And it's like, when your time comes and you want kids, like you're ready. So just take me back to, you know, you're 33, 34, 35. You're doing these cycles. You're doing these tests. Nothing's working. Like, what are you thinking? What are you feeling then? I began to get really deeply depressed and started focusing my energy on negative things, um, such as involving myself in relationships, even in church with women that were not helping me spiritually. I one positive thing that came out of it is that I decided to go back to school and actually graduate it with a bachelor's degree in science, which is what I wanted. So I focused my attention on other things during that depression. Um, I ate a lot. I binged. I lost a lot of sleep. There was a lot of crying moments. I cried myself to sleep pretty much every night asking the same question, Lord, when are you going to give me my son, Samuel? And that would not stop. And I would ask him in anger and I would scream at him. And it's like, when, when are you going to give me my son, Samuel? I wanted a son. Above all things, I wanted a son. All right. So let's talk a little more because you mentioned the name, my son, Samuel. We're not just talking about any kid. That's why, you know, even when the verse says for this child, I have prayed, it wasn't just any child. There was a certain child that God already had in mind for you. So when did God speak to you about your children? So I had gone to see a Dr. Cohen on Friday night, and I believe it was December the 3rd. I went to see Dr. Cohen, and Dr. Cohen said to me, um, I have bad news. Your ovaries have completely shut down at this point. They're not ovulating anymore. The medicine is not working. There's nothing else that I can give you. Mm -hmm. However, if you want, we can do um, in vitro. Yeah. And I said, Okay. And he explained to me what the process was. He says, but the problem is that your insurance doesn't cover that. And it's about $25,000. Well, back then it was. That's all. Yeah, 25000 Yeah. He said 25000 And I just said, hmm. <laughs> I looked at him and I said, well, what can I, well, we can start you on a payment plan. And I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm buying a child. Like I'm starting on a payment plan to have a baby. Like it just made no sense to me how I was not allowing God to take care of this, how I just wanted to do it on my own and do the process, push through the process on my own, with my own strengths. And so the doctor called me and he says, you decide, you let me know. So I said, okay, I'll call you Monday. So then Sunday night, Sunday afternoon, I received a phone call from my sister, Elizabeth, who says that there's a prophetess in daddy's church, which was three hours away, by the way. And I had just gotten out of my service. And um, he said, she says to me, listen, you really want to hear this girl? You want to come out here? I mean, she's great. You should have come out here through a weekend. I was so desperate mm -hmm. that I just wanted the Lord to say something to me about this whole situation. I wanted him to say, hey, I got you. Hey, he's coming. Hey, you know. And in, in that desperation, I jumped in the car with my, my husband, my mother-in-law. We drove the, the three and a half hours and we got to the church. I think we got there a little late mm -hmm. and she started to preach. And when she preached the word, she was doing the altar call. And I stood there and I challenged God. And I said, God, if you use this girl, then you need to use her to tell me about my situation. 
I don't want no one from my family. I don't want no one to say anything to me. You need to use this girl who I've never met to tell me what's going on because I believe I have to trust in you. And I was just standing there crying. And then I, I opened up my eyes and she just points at me. And she said, you come up here. And I was like, I was pretending like it wasn't me. <laughs> I looked behind. I was like, she says, no, you. The minute she went to pray for me, she shot right from my um, lower abdomen, mm -hmm. which is where the wound is. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, um, not things that I wanted to hear, but she did tell me this. She says, you're going to conceive. Can you remember the exact words? Even if they were in Spanish, we can <laughs> translate them. Well, she she said to me, um, I've seen you cry. Okay. I've seen the way you beg me. I've seen the way you look up at heavens when you walk out of that clinic. Mm -hmm. I see you and I've heard your cries. And she says, I will give you what you're asking for. I will give you a son, but he won't be alone. You're going to have more children. Mm -hmm. You are listening to what man is telling you, but you're not listening to what I'm telling you. I don't care what that doctor has told you. I am the one that creates the miracles. I am the one that will heal you. And then she started saying, and right now, as we speak, mm -hmm. or as I speak to you, feel or receive the healing in your body. Mm -hmm. So she said that to me and that was in December 5th, 2005. Right, like just a few days when you just got yeah. the horrible news. That's correct. And she says, it doesn't matter what he's saying. And this, she said in Spanish, I mean, she said it all in Spanish, but she said, y enderezco todo lo que está torcido adentro de tu cuerpo. Mm -hmm. Te limpio. Right. So I, and I was like, you everything that's crooked in your body. And yeah, the, yeah, I'm going to fix it. Whatever's messed up in there, I'm going to fix it, which is what I was telling God all the time. Whatever's messed up, can you just fix it? So she's using exactly ver verbatim the words that I um, were, would use when I prayed. And so- Can I interject? I remember when you shared the testimony with me, you said that she told you like, deja de llorar, right. vas a tener hijos y más de uno. Right. Uno. So stop crying. You're going to have children and more than one. And, and more than one. She says, all you need to focus now is preach the word. I'm going to do the rest. I'm going to give you children. She didn't say a child. She said children. She was very specific. That's important. Y lo verás con tus ojos mientras tu cuerpo cambiará. Y me dirás todos los días, gracias, Señor, por lo que tú has hecho. Y los mirará y no entenderás el por qué están aquí. Can you you she would say this, lo contemplará con tus ojos y no lo vas a creer, lo que yo voy a hacer con tu cuerpo. Porque el hombre te dice que no, pero yo te digo que sí, porque yo soy soberano. Never forget that. Let's, let's translate that for everybody who doesn't know <laughs> Spanish. He just, he just said that he sat on his throne and he was God. And who was I to question him? And because he was God, he was going to give me children. And because he's so sovereign, I would look at these children every day and just be thankful that I have them, which is what happens now. I stare at them and they think I'm crazy. <laughs> so that was not long after you really started the process. Mm -hmm. No. The timing, right? It was December, 2005, December 5th, 2005. Okay, December 5th, 2005. And at this and point, until your children actually came, how much time passed from when God spoke to you till they actually came? Five years. See, this is why we need to take a pause here because we're not sitting here and saying, the Lord spoke to me and there they were. No. The Lord spoke and five years later, five years that's later. a long time, especially when you were 33 to begin with, like right. the clock is ticking and this it's so, I think that's what makes fertility particularly difficult time. We don't have all the time. We don't. The more and time that, passes, the worse it gets, scientifically speaking. Yeah. And I and I knew this. And I said, okay, so I'm thinking it's happening next yeah. year, 2006. I'm getting pregnant. Yeah, it didn't happen for me. So let's have an honest moment. How much did you replay those words? Did you doubt? I mean, what happened in those five years? <laughs> well, I doubt it. I doubt it. It's so much. It was so much, so much doubt. Um, I had conversations with people. I had somebody tell me from my own family. She said to me, well, if, if you can't, it's okay. Don't worry about it. And I said, no, God's not a liar. He's not going to lie to me. Why would God lie to me? And then I, I, I go to the verse in Hebrews 10, 23, that says, 
Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Yes. He is faithful. The one that promised is faithful. Like I shouldn't be wavering on what he told me. And let me tell you, it was difficult times and it was dark because every day for those five years, I prayed over these children. I prayed over this, this one child. I knew the one child, at least the other one I didn't know about, but the one child I was like, yeah, I know his name is going to be Sam and I know he's coming and, and I would just pray and I would start tithing. So now I put my, my faith into action. Mm-hmm. I started tithing for Sam. I started making, um, tithes for the uh, Royal Rangers. I would put his name on an envelope and put money as if he existed with his full name, which is the name that he carries now. I knew that God was going to be faithful, but it was hard trusting and believing that because I saw nothing happen. And can I say to those listening, um, your doubt does not negate what God's going to do because I doubted and, and the doubt is natural, but faith is what you need to overcome the doubt. So if I'm like, well, I don't really know. I mean, to this day, I replay the words that the woman who prayed for me said. She said, you're going to be a mother and it's not going to be one or two. Because I was specific with God. And I said, I don't want anybody to come and say your petition is coming. God, you know, because those are general things that I asked God, I need you to please confirm how many kids I'm going to have. Because in my heart, I asked him for three and I feel like there was going to be three. So when she says, not one and not two. Well, guys, this is simple math. If it's not one and it's not two, it's gotta be three. And you know what's funny? And I felt like the way God talks, you know, we're supposed to recognize his voice. And your testimony helped me so much because God told you more than one. He more never than. said you're gonna have twins, which surprise, he has <laughs> twins. If we didn't, you know, if you didn't know already, we'll 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 show you the kids soon. But why would God just say more than one? Why would God tell me not one, not two? Because that sounds like the same person. Like to me, those statements feel like they came from the same person, which is God. That's just how he talks. Right. Like he I gives mean, you enough information. But not a lot. <laughs> just enough. Just enough. <laughs> for you to keep on moving. So I don't want you to torment yourself over doubt. Make sure right. your faith overcomes your doubt. Yes, don't lie in your doubt, but do not say, well, because I've doubted and because I did this and that, God is going to take it away. No, because we all we all have doubt. I'm going to be honest. I, yeah. There were times when I say, okay, forget it. You know, at this point, point, if you changed your mind and I would talk to them and say, okay, you know what? I, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine having um, 12 nieces and nephews. I'll deal with them. And I'm the godmother to um, one of them. And I, I just wanted her to have the best life. I said, if I can't have a child, this is going to be my child, which is Abigail. But God was probably laughing at me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? And he was seeing us with our children. You know, like, I feel yes. like the reason why maybe he didn't intervene in all those moments where I was sad and crying because he was already looking at me holding a newborn. He was looking at me with my son who's already almost two years old. Let's get back to you. And I know there was a dream that God gave you along the way. So within those five years, let's talk about how God revealed your children to you in a dream. Okay, so I wanna say this. We had to go to church to clean the church. And this is a a testimony that we all share, uh, Alex's mother, myself, and Alex. So we share this vision that happened at the church. We went to clean the church. And while I'm in the church, according to what she tells me, I lay down. When I'm laying there, she says that the church got full of fog. Like a mist came into the church. She felt it was spirit. My husband felt it too. But they not only felt it, they saw what was happening. While I'm laying there, she says that she saw me like in a surround sleep, in a sound sleep. She didn't understand why I was asleep when I was there to clean the church. And I remember getting up and I said to her, I feel like I just had surgery. And she says to me, why? I said, because my, my abdomen really hurts. Like I just had surgery. And so I showed her and I had a scar, like a C-section scar across my abdomen and I had not had any children. And we understood that God did something to me or to my body in that church that night. Uh, Days after that, I started dreaming 
in the middle of the night that I was somewhere with someone walking and there was an emergency. The point is I had to use my phone. Now, once I pick up my phone to make the phone call, I hear a voice on the other side that says, hey, mom, it's me. Um, I love you. And I was like, who are you? It's me, Sam, your oldest son. I was like, no, you're not. He goes, well, I just wanted to tell you that Sophia is not behaving. Mm -hmm. And I said, who? I said, is your father there? Because I wanted to speak to the father of this child. He goes, yeah, he's right here. So my husband gets on the phone and he says, and I said to him, when did we have children? He goes, come on, babe. We've, we've had them for a while. We have two. focus. And I was like, we have kids? He goes, yes, we have a boy and a girl. We have two. And I was like, no, that's impossible. He goes, I don't know what's wrong with you, but you need to focus. And this and is I, the dream, right? This is on the dream. This is in the dream. Okay. So then I said to him, okay, can you put the child on the phone again? Because now I want to hear the voice. So he gets back on the voice and he says to me, he goes, hey, mom, I'll see you soon. I'm coming. I'll see you soon, mom. Don't forget, I'm going to see you soon. And I was like, really? Can you say it again? He goes, mom. I'll see you soon. Mom, I love you, mom. I really do love you. And he hung up the phone. I woke up and I, I woke my husband up and I was crying. And until this day, we talk about that. He said that I was hysterical and I was crying and shaking. And I said, I heard my son's voice. I heard our son's voice. I heard him. I know what he sounds like. And he said, he's coming soon and he's coming soon. I don't know when, but he's coming soon. Now that must have been maybe 2007. Okay. And <laughs> that's the dream that I had. I heard his voice and I knew from that day forward that God was not going to fail me in spite of what everybody was saying, in spite of how I felt, because I continued to go to the doctor. I want you to know, so I can monitor me, but nothing was working. Mm -hmm. And then one day I decided no more medicine, no more drugs, no more medicine, no more injections, nothing. I don't want anything more. I gained all this weight. I was like, I'm not doing this anymore, Lord. And I prayed mm -hmm. and I got on my knees. That was April of 2008. And I said to the Lord, I want you to crucify my body on the cross. Like you crucified yourself because I had to preach one of the seven words. Mm -hmm. And I remember pouring my heart out to God. I said, I can't do it anymore, Lord. I'm very depressed and I need you to help me with this process. I want this child and you need to bring me this child now. It's just amazing. I mean, it, I don't think hearing this for me will ever get old. And I am so thankful that we're recording this because this is going to have to minister to me a, once and again, because I think in this process, it's like so much up and down. It's like some days you're so full of faith, like, yes, the Lord, he's doing it. You're saving the baby clothes. You got everything. And then the next day, it could be literally the next day. And you're just like, I don't know if this is ever going to happen. <laughs> and on yeah. top of that, the medicine, the visits, the opinions. I was tired. I was tired of the shots. I was tired of poking my body. I was tired of taking the drugs. It's a lot of the, years. The weight would not go down. And I'm still, you know, I've lost a lot of weight, but it's, it's still on my body. Like I feel tired. And so I asked the Lord for this, but it took a toll on my body. Emotionally, I was a mess. I hey, ladies, listen up. You don't want to miss the powerful word that's coming next. And you shouldn't fill that void with anything. You should just be confident that if God is the one that promised this to you, he's going to give it to you. It's going to happen. We just have to wait and be patient in the process. We have to learn to be patient in the process. It's what God wants when he wants, you know, he's not in our, he's not on our time. He's on his time. Mm -hmm. He knows when we deserve this or when we should get this. But if he promised it to you, it's happening. It's happening. We hear how God spoke to you. We hear this long process you went through, the ups and the downs. Let's finally talk about the good part. When the pregnancy came, take us through uh, what's going on here. So in 2009, May, we decided to go to uh, Disney World because I had never been there. And I was like, okay, we're gonna go to Disney World. But on our way there, I said to him, I feel real sick. And he's like, what's wrong with you? I was like, I don't know. I just feel like I wanna, you know, puke and... <laughs> 
I was just feeling really sick. And he's like, we're on vacation. It's the first time we've been here. Let's enjoy. And I had a really great time. What I didn't know was that I was pregnant at that time. Um, so in, on, in Florida, he, after we left Disney World, I said to him, um, I think we should go take a test before we get to the hotel. And he's like, oh, go buy a test before we get to the hotel. So I went and bought a test. And he says, no, nah, babe, it's not, come on, stop. You know, you're already making these things in your mind because you really want this child. I really want it too, but I don't want you to get depressed and start crying. I was like, no, I, I know I am. I know I am. So I took it and I ran out the bathroom. I said, I'm pregnant. He goes, no, you're not. I was like, yeah, I am. <laughs> so we finally go back to Dr. Cohen. And then he said, Dr. Cohen, we think we're pregnant and we need you to check to see if we are. And we go to Dr. Cohen and he checks my blood. And he says, yeah, you're pregnant, definitely pregnancy, but I have to check how viable that pregnancy is. And so he said, wait a few weeks. And then we went back. So I remember it clear as day. We go to sonogram and he is checking. He's sitting behind the screen. Now, mind you, this is the same doctor that said to me, it's $25,000 to do yeah. the, 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 right, the in vitro. And I said, um, no. And then he starts checking and he goes, his eyes just opened so wide. And he goes, you're pregnant. I said, yeah, I know. Thank you. So how does it look? He goes, no, 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 no. You're really pregnant. Like he was really serious. And I was like, okay, yeah, thank you. He goes, no you have two babies in there. I said, no, I don't. So he goes, yeah, you do. He goes, hold up, hold up. I think I see a third. Hold up, hold up, hold up. And, I, and he goes, oh, no, no, no. It's just, it's just two. So my husband <laughs> squeezes my hands so hard. He says, what did you do? He said to me, what did you do? I, I said, I prayed to God. He goes, did you pray to God for twins? I said, no, I just prayed for one child. And he said, I'm going to do another study on you really quick. I just need to look at your ovaries. So he looked at my ovaries. He goes, I want you to know that in this cycle, not only did you ovulate, you ovulated three times from one ovary and four times from another. There were seven that you had ovulated and two of them took. And then he said to me, now this is when the process really begins. I, I, I tell you that I don't even know what I said. I know that I praised God. I cried. I jumped in that parking lot. I think I even spoke in tongues, to be <laughs> honest with you, because I was like, Lord, and now the doubt started. What if I lose these babies? What if they die? It could never end. I mean, that, that, that's what I was like. Oh, now I'm pregnant. I am 37 and a half years old at this point. I'm like, what if they die? What if they have um, you know, they come with down syndrome because that's the other fear. You're 35 now children, you know, are potentially to, to get down syndrome and all these things. And, and I was like, no, well, do you have to stop? Like I would talk to myself, you have to stop that because if God promised this, he's not going to give you sick children. He's, he's going to be faithful to you to remember what God has spoken over my life. And the more my body changed, the more I would do for the church. I was very active in the church. I was doing everything. I was preaching. I was singing. I was doing what I had to do because as God was faithful to me, I wanted to be faithful to him. Amen. And let's, let's see some pictures of the children. We'll put up some pictures for you guys. Um, Amen. So then now we go back to the doctor because we need to see what the sex are. And I'm like, I know I have a son. I know I have a son. I know I have a son. So we go to the doctor's office and sure enough, at 16 weeks, we were able to see our son. And I was like, there he is. There's Samuel. And we had names of him. We knew he was coming. So we said, there's Sam. But unfortunately, she wouldn't show. And so, and I said, she, I had an outing to go to that I had to go singing. And what I'm singing, the person that was preaching me called me up and said to me, I'm going to tell you something, hmm. what God has given you, it's just not any children. You have two in there. And I'm like, okay, God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she says to me, but it's not going to be, um, what you think it is. It's going to be what God wants it to be. But I will tell you this. She says, what you're carrying in your womb right now, you have a prophet and a Levite. And I'm letting you borrow them because I've seen your cries, but they are mine. Do not forget that they are my children. And I went home and I was like, wow, I'm carrying a prophet and a Levite. And I just don't know who's what. 
Then at 29 weeks, I went back to the doctor and sure enough, the Lord had also fulfilled something else that I had requested. He said that I was having a girl and a boy. Praise God for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's just amazing. And you talked to them on the phone how many years prior? Well, at least Sammy, he told you Sophie wasn't behaving. Oh, yeah. And, and, and sure enough, I named them Samuel and Sophia. <laughs> and I mean, how many years ago was that? That's what I'm saying. I mean, years are passing in between these things. Yes. Well, be, be, between that time, it must have been um, maybe like 2006. And then I got pregnant in 2000, like mid-2009. So yeah, by the time I met them, it was 2010, January of 2010. That's a long time. It's a long time. And what's funny is that, you know, now they're 11 years old. Praise God. I praise God for them because they're 11 years old and they're very intelligent. And Sam is a prophet. I want you guys to know that has been confirmed many times. The Lord has used my son to speak to me and to other people. Mm -hmm. To glory be to God. He is the prophet of the house. And Sophie is a Levite. She plays um, by ear strings. She plays a ukulele. She plays keys, piano, and everything has been by ear. Um, she just picks up, she writes songs. So she's also a writer. She's part of our worship team, in, the adult worship team. She is our lead um, harmonizer. Like she harmonizes all our songs. And I, I can't begin to tell you that everything God has promised. And not only did he promise me children, he told me that I will provide for them everything that they need. And so God has provided for them every single day, exactly the way he promised it would be. It has been because he's faithful. And when God gives you something, he's going to give you the whole kit and caboodle. It's just not going to be the one thing he's going to, if he promised it a certain way, that's the way it's going to be. And I, I wouldn't have had it any other way. I love them so, so deep. I'm a sucker for those kids and they know it. They know it. <laughs> Your best weapon is getting on your knees and proclaiming it. and act in faith. Do tithings like I was doing for them. Well, for more so for my son. I didn't know she existed, but God knew she was in the existence. And I proclaimed over their life. I, I prayed for them. I prayed for my son like if he was in existence. Like I would pray for him every day. Lord, I ask you to bless Samuel. This is the prayers I used to make. It sounds crazy. Yeah. bless him bless him today you know i want him to come soon lord wherever he may be just bring him home soon these are the prayers i would make we cannot help god in our process we have to just go through it and believe it and if the thing is you need to believe it like you see it don't believe you we believe so much in the things the physical things that we see but we stop believing in the things that are eternal and those are the ones that are real because everything that you see is it, it's just temporary but the things that are that are not there, that you can't see are the ones that God has prepared for us and are the ones that are real, right? So to encourage you, woman of God, for you to seek the Lord, get on your knees, serve God with all your might. This is, it's not gonna be forgotten that God has promised this to you. God's just not gonna throw it aside and say, you know what, it's, it, I'll do it whenever. God, God knows and, and understands when it's your time. And ask him to give you un understanding that surpasses everything. Because once you have that peace that surpasses all understanding, believe me, you're going to understand that there's a plan of God. And God knew the time that I needed these children in my life. I would have wanted them when I was 33, but I was not prepared for them at 33. I was not prepared for them at 34. I was not prepared for them when I was 37. I was prepared for them at 39 years old, which is when God brought them. Because at that time... I already had my life together. I had it together. I had already finished school. I was already in my career. I had traveled with my husband and God knew that this was the perfect timing. It's all in God's timing. Remember, it's not in your timing. Amen. We just want to, from the bottom of our heart, thank our sister, Awil Laticas, for sharing this powerful testimony. And I, I, I know that this testimony is going to reach many women just as it's impacted my life. And like I said, continues to impact my life. Stay tuned as we continue to discuss this topics. We'll have different women who come and speak from their experience. And we're going to be talking about some of the barren women in the Bible, because let me let me tell you something. God, he sees us and he hears our cry. And if I know something about God, I know he's a specialist 
in infertility. God bless you. Keep coming back to the well for more teachings, more encouragement. Thank you again, Awilda. You wanted to say bye to everybody? Bye, everyone. Bye. God bless.